Welcome to Sinister Heroes. I'm your host, Danny Iniquitous. Thank you for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, this is a channel about Dungeons and Dragons where we try and take a darker tone with everything we do here. So if you like edgy kind of content, definitely hit that like and subscribe buttons. A big thank you to our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. It's amazing what you guys do for us. And if you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, the link is in the description. And a big thank you to our good friends at Dice Legion. We use the promo code SINISTER and get 10% off all of your purchases. They're great for IRL games the link is also in the description uh, we are doing a big push to hit 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year we're at the halfway mark we're so so close uh, please hit that subscribe button if you've been here a few times and you like the content we are definitely pushing for it so uh, everything we you guys can do is a great great help and we couldn't be here without you so we're so grateful for you guys all that out of the way we're gonna talk about the Leonin Mythic Odyssey of Theros is a very unique setting. It's very Clash of the Titans, the Odyssey, uh, the Iliad, that kind of stuff. Achilles, that's kind of the world that uh, that is encompassed in this kind of universe. Very ancient Greek. Uh, it's a very unique setting. There aren't a lot of settings like it. Uh, it's a very, it has a couple of cool different systems in it for the actual book with piety and how that affects your gods and, and, and what you're doing and some of your weapons and your items uh, have things in that regard. So it's very, very drawn into using a couple of new mechanics in order to use your actions and role playing affect what gear you have, uh, which is a very cool concept, which I think really should evolve and, and be continuously put in. Uh, that being said, the Leonin are physically unique. They are a lion species. They're like a lion-human hybrid. Uh, if you played League of Legends, Rengar is definitely the perfect epitome of that. Um, you're big, hulking, you have a mane, that, that incredible lion head. Uh, you have a lot of very feral attributes to it yourself. And you can go a lot of cool ways just basing yourself off the characteristics of a lion and a humanoid and that kind of world that uh, Theros really is. Uh, because lions are so uh, regal and, and such a symbol of royalty, that really kind of pulls this great noble uh, position of power to the Leonin. And it really kind of gives them stature and presence. So if you're going to build a character like that, definitely try and incorporate that. Uh, there's definitely going to be a lot of, uh, if you're an evil or character, there's going to be a lot of notes of tyranny to, to how you play your lion, your Leonin. It's going to reflect like Scar from the Lion King. Like There's going to be a lot of influence from the bestial part of yourselves that really shape who your character is. And it's a great thing to really look into and take your time to, to really know. The Leonin base stats are pretty much equal to everyone else. Uh, they are medium sized. They usually stand about six feet to seven feet tall, so they're on the taller side. Um, they do have dark vision, which is a big plus for everyone. Uh, their ability score increase when they produced Mystic Odyssey of Theros didn't have that Tasha's you can put your ability scores wherever you wanted. So when they were created, they were Constitution 2 and Strength 1. Again, using that kind of physical uh, power of the lion to really design a more uh, durable and strong kind of a, a melee kind of a character. So that's really kind of where those ability scores kind of reflect on the character and their uh, where they are and the way they look. Uh, you do have 35 walk speed, uh, which is a little bit higher than everyone else. So a little bit of extra movement can be very, very useful. Claws. Your claws are natural weapons, which you can use to make unarmed strikes. If you hit with them, you can deal slashing damage equal to 1d4 plus your strength modifier. This is a lot of the times just a flavor thing. If you're using unarmed fighting style for a fighter, if you were a monk, uh, this would be something that you would incorporate to kind of give your character flavor as opposed to just making a normal strike. That being said, in the event, if you and your party find yourselves disarmed with no items whatsoever, this makes you more viable as a melee fighter because it gives you something that'll do additional damage than everything else would. So it gives you this great opportunity to kind of show off your Leonin characteristics by still leading the charge and going front and being able to handle whatever comes your way. Hunter's Instincts. You have proficiency in one of the following skills of your choice. Athletics, intimidation, perception, or survival. I, I can't stress this enough, but survival is a lot more useful than people think. 
simply because if you're tracking someone, if you're looking for someone, anything like that is a skill that um, would require a survival check. Those kinds of things are important if you're entering a building or anything looking for someone that's been there. Survival is how you could track where they've been or how to mitigate where they've been, what tracks they've made, and to try and find your way uh, to your goal. Out in adventuring, when you're running around in the forest trying to travel in between cities, survival is a very useful skill. Uh, I just don't think it gets enough love, so I wanted to make sure to bring that out. Athletics, you have you're kind of directed to have strength anyway. Athletics is a lot more common of a check. Uh, it's absolutely usable. Intimidation, this depends on who you want to be. If you want to invest in charisma, if you don't, uh, having a little bit of intimidation isn't the worst thing in the world. And perception is going to be the most used skill out of all of these options. But if you get perception on every character, it kind of mitigates the importance and it makes it such a necessity that it's almost a crutch when you see it because you have to get it. Uh, but I would try and pick one of the other options simply because I don't want to be in a situation where I feel like I have to take something because it's D&D, &D, uh, you can just trust in the dice. Daunting Roar. As a bonus action, you can let out an especially menacing roar. Creatures of your choice within 10 feet of you that can hear you must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or become frightened of you until the end of your next turn. The DC of the save equals to 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus your constitution modifier. Once you use this trait, you can't use this until you finish a short or long rest. Here's the great thing about this. If you're not a bonus action heavy character, this is a big bonus to you. The fact that you can have anything within 10 feet of you frightened until the end of your next turn is a big benefit. It's a bonus action, so depending if you're a fighter that's not doing anything with dual wielding or anything like that, your bonus action might be regularly free. If you're a barbarian, your bonus action might be regularly free. Um, anything that's up in melee, if you're a Hexblade Warlock and you've already put on your Hexblade's curse or you're not going to use it that fight, if you're not going to be using Hex, which sometimes I avoid getting... This is a great way to run up bonus action, fear everything. If you have something with reach, anything that fails that save cannot move closer to you until the end of your next turn. So you can fear them, stay out of their range, attack, attack, wait till the next turn, attack, attack, and then run away. And you've successfully given yourself an opportunity to not take damage. Uh, it's a good way to break up your movement also. Move up use it if you don't have to move up anymore uh you can hang out there or if you do whatever move up use it it gives you options and for anything that's going to be melee or close to it that doesn't need a bonus action this is so much more useful because of where it slots into your action economy our final thoughts the leonin are wonderful when you start taking into consideration uh what it means to have the pride of a lion this gives you this great concept of how much you believe in your own strength and how you carry the insults that the world throws at you when the when they throw the weakest monster to fight you out of the bunch you should feel insulted you know you should really have this passion for who you are and and the right to rule uh, and that should come inherent to you and that creates this great dichotomy of of where you fit into the world you're 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 built to rule you're built to be this great great bestial force so how does that fit into a world where you might not be well liked there's a great sequence of honor and code with leonin which is something you really got to dive into the lore to get which is absolutely worth reading if you're going to play a character I encourage you to dive into their lore to really help gain some of their history and build out from that because there's a lot of things you can carry with you that give you inspiration or give you an opportunity to see emotion of an emotion of a world at a certain point and put a different perspective on it to create a unique character. Um, and the Leonin have a lot of pride 
in who they are and honor and there's a certain dignity to them and that again reflects the the regalness of what being a lion is uh, so definitely try and incorporate into that if you if you really really take the time out to look into it you can make a very very in-depth uh, noble hero uh, with Leonin and they give you a cool option to do that because you look so dynamically different from everything else that being said we're going to bring this video to a close if you've made it this far into the video definitely hit that like button thank you so much uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already again we're pushing for 2000s by the end of the year we're at the halfway mark we can do this but we need your help to do so uh big shout out to our good friends at the at uh dice legion thank you for helping us out and helping us out with the promo code sinister uh their link is in the website is in the description uh big thank you to our patreon supporters we love you guys thank you so much for what you do if you're interested in becoming a patreon supporter the link is also in the description with all that said and done thank you for giving a spooky kid a chance